Lights, camera, action! So far on this channel we've looked at specific films and specific genres for analysis, but we haven't really ventured into the history of cinema. So what better place to start than arguably the most important few years in film culture? If you haven't guessed what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the era of the French New Wave. Now odds are, if you study movies or have a keen interest in the medium, then you more than likely have at least heard of this term before, but may not actually know what's so influential about it. I'd encourage everyone by the end of this video to look further into the history of the new wave and definitely watch the films associated with it. If you're involved in any of the arts, it's a pretty inspiring story. It shows that you don't need to work at the bottom for years to get to where you want to be. But for those that don't know and for the sake of brevity, here's the story of the French new wave's genesis in a nutshell. It's Paris in the late 50s and four French film enthusiasts write and discuss about cinema as they don't have the money to make their own films. Jean-Luc Godard, François Truffaut, Claude Chabrol and Jacques Rivette become known as the Young Turks. They talk about how movies feel stale due to a lack of innovation in the industry. For that reason, they decide to create films in their own new and original format. And by doing so, they change the face of cinema. A large aspect of the new wave, which also goes by the name La Nouvelle Vague, was to create a personal kind of cinema. One in which the film professed the director's life experiences and philosophies. The clip you're about to see is from Jean-Luc Godard's short film, The Small Soldier. La photographie, c'est la vérité. Et le cinéma, c'est 24 fois la vérité par seconde. This quote is the essence of the philosophy behind the Unturks process when making movies. Their whole purpose was to capture French life during the 50s and 60s, and they felt that the best way to present that to the world was through cinema. Que le cinéma était très bien. Simplement que ça manquait de sincérité et qu'il fallait faire la même chose en mieux. However, they couldn't use the already established film techniques of their predecessors because that wasn't reflective of their life. It resembled an era of movies that they thought were outdated. In order to create a true representation of their lives, their films needed to differentiate themselves from their older counterparts. So they ventured into developing a new style of filmmaking. The result was, whatever films had been doing up to that point to tell their stories, they needed to create an alternative. But this wasn't just a case of being different for the sake of it, but to develop original techniques that could substitute the already existing methods. They wanted to show that things could be done differently, and do that by slapping the face of conventional cinema. Au cinéma, c'est comme ça et pas autrement. The French New Wave didn't destroy the pre-established rules films had used for years, they simply added to them, and you can see that the medium is a better place for it. So let's see why we should be so thankful for this group of French bohemians. What they brought to editing was a breaking of the rules. Whatever books that said this is how it had to be done, they burned them. The first thing you're likely to notice about a French New Wave film is its editing. So what was so special about it? Well first off, let's enhance on some of the components of editing, specifically cuts. What's the meaning behind a jump cut? Well a jump cut is both spatial and temporal. Let me make that easier. A jump cut is used to show the difference in both the space and time between two shots. And we can separate jump cuts into two distinct functionalities. To match two shots. I'm gonna drive and turn you and... Hey! or to mismatch two shots. The latter being the reason as to why jump cuts were mainly avoided prior to the new wave. Editing's purpose back then was to maintain continuity in scenes and keep things flowing at a very specific pace. If we were to think about the films that were being made, there was a certain film language that was very, very distinct. Certain kinds of coverage, long shot, two shot, single, single. There was a f almost a formulaic way of presenting films. This film language was very strict, and in editorial terms, there were rules that one felt could not be broken. These rules were a way of keeping editing invisible, as there's nothing intrusive about it so the audience doesn't notice it. This is fine depending on the type of movie you're creating, but if there's one thing about the Young Turks, it's that they wanted to be noticed. Seeing how conversations were edited in other pictures at the time, let's take a look at how a conversation was edited in Godard's Breathless. J'aime une fille qui a une très jolie nuque, de très jolis seins, 
une très jolie voix, de très jolis poignets, un très joli front, de très jolis genoux. No master shot, no reaction shot, no over the shoulder. And flooded with discontinuous editing. When you edit a conversation scene with jump cuts, what you do is contrast two pieces of footage instead of complement. The result? The audience becomes more conscious that they're watching a movie. Je lui donne rendez-vous, on déjeune ensemble. Je voulais lui dire, voilà, on est bons amis. Je trouve qu'on devrait coucher ensemble. Au revoir, comme ça. Et je ne sais pas. As we established, the new wave was about representing the spirit of their era by using new techniques to create a new style of filmmaking. That style was to make the audience aware that they were watching a film. It demystified audiences at the time as it didn't follow Hollywood's editing etiquette. Où tu vas maintenant Au New York Herald. Tournez par la tête, regardez devant vous. Quoi ça sert d'écrire des articles But by doing so, they were able to reduce restrictions on the assembly of their movies. They made filmmaking look easy. The term montage is the French term for assembly when editing. And if it wasn't for this style of editing, the modern day montage may not have existed without it. You may be familiar with auteur theory. Well, that too stemmed from the era of the new wave. It meant that the director of a film was seen as its author and the overall creative force behind the picture. During the new wave, another theory was created, known as la camera stylo, which literally means that a director should use their camera the same way a writer would use their pen. This simple concept has changed filmmaking. The idea that a director could have his or her own visual trademarks and stylings that would personalize their films has enhanced creativity in this medium since its inception. It's why we have auteurs today. Movies became less dictated by the big studios, and the directors of the French New Wave through their own innovation became auteurs themselves. The editing stylization of the New Wave was too an influence in itself. By cutting out moments that the filmmakers felt weren't important to the scene, it sped up the film. Ever since then, movies' paces have increased significantly. These filmmakers understood the grammar of films so well that they realized that the audience doesn't have to be shown everything. An example of this was not just their editing of individual scenes, but transitional editing too. In most older movies, you would move from one location to another through a dissolve, and then you'd have to watch your character walk to wherever it is they were going. This isn't necessary. So what was the new wave's alternative? Oh la la, Michel. Just cut to it. This comprehension of film language contributed to the golden rule of show don't tell. Because they realized that not only do you not need to tell, but sometimes you don't even need to show. But if you do need to introduce a setting, you don't need to spend an entire scene showing off the surroundings. Francois Truffaut would simply pan towards a setting if it was in the same area. That way you have the transition and establishing shot all in one take. Which brings us to the second most noticeable aspect of the new wave, camera movement. Now, handheld cameras weren't used exclusively by the directors of the Nouvelle Vague, but the concept of an unencumbered camera was still in its infancy. So in order to differentiate themselves from what they deemed archaic cinema once more, they experimented with moving the camera as opposed to leaving it static. Truffaut liked to pan and move quickly during a scene. Godard typically tracked from a low angle in front of his characters. Agnes Varda tracked slowly through her settings almost like a POV shot. These are just a few instances I've chosen because there's no definitive definition for what a moving camera means in a film, but we can look at the difference between the movement of the new wave compared to the stasis of older flicks. For one, camera movement can make a closed frame scene become an open frame scene. This changes your movie's tone as the film's environment feels less encapsulated to what's just in the frame. It's like when we see an actor look or interact with a subject off screen. We subconsciously assume that there is a world outside of what we see, but I'm sure I've spoken about this technique before. Pick any scene in any new wave film and you're more than likely to see the camera do something unconventional. Two people talking, camera moves. Someone entering a scene, camera moves. You could argue that this was art through adversity as they couldn't afford the best technology at the time, but regardless, this technique became a staple of the new wave. The directors took influence from documentaries of the time to capture a fly on the wall feel. The movements of the camera were blurring the lines between art and reality. But the thing that I find most interesting about this is that because the directors of the new wave wanted to be different from what they called cinema du papa, whenever camera movement was typically used for a scene, they would use editing. And whenever editing was typically used, they used camera movement. Here's a clip from Double Indemnity. A woman is hiding from a man and the tension is displayed through editing. And bother the things they would squeeze out. 
And they haven't got a single thing to go on, Keys. Oh, not too much. Just 26 years' experience, all the percentage there is, and this hunk of concrete in my stomach. But now here's another scene from Breathless. A woman is hiding from a man, but this time the tension is displayed through the movement of the camera. An alternative. They didn't want to be different for the sake of it. They wanted to find new methods that worked in the same way the older techniques did. And if the editing and movement of the camera wasn't enough to change the style of films forever, the other thing the new wave was famous for was its unorthodox in-your-face approach. But once more, all they were really doing were finding new ways to convey the same message. For example, you need to show something important to the audience. So what's the best way to do that? Most people would probably say a close-up, and yeah, that's fine. But remember, that's not the style of the Nouvelle Vague. They didn't want to immerse you in a realistic sense. Their techniques were very playful. In second. So instead of a close-up, how about altering the frame itself? This still gives us the same function as a close-up, as the camera is drawing our attention to a specific point in the scene. Playing with the frame and developing alternate techniques has been essential in newer auteurs enhancing their own styles. By using this technique, you can go from a close-up to a wider angle, without cutting or even moving the camera, all while maintaining the essence of that self-aware style. They even broke their own newly established rules of editing. Instead of using montages which their films used extensively, show multiple shots of the same scene at once in the frame. Another famous technique to show emphasis was to use freeze frames. Again, this could have been done with a close-up or perhaps a slow zoom to enhance the subject of a scene, but instead they took a snapshot of the moment. I find this technique more dramatic because it's almost as though it immortalises a moment in time. If cinema is truth 24 times a second, it makes you wonder what was so spectacular about that one truth. With all these techniques, you're still conveying various pieces of information to the viewer, but doing so by altering the perceptions of what you're allowed to do with cinema. These directors were still breaking the fourth wall. Which, by the way, was another technique that they enjoyed using. If you're still sceptical as to whether the Nouvelle Vague intentionally toyed with the audience's expectations, just look at how many times their movies directly acknowledge them. The Nouvelle Vague wanted to have the audience tested as to what could be a movie and how they could push the boundaries of storytelling, not just with their techniques, but with their content too. Many of the films would often feature non sequiturs because, well, because they could. It added to the free-spirited nature they aimed for. Uh, for 30 to 40 years, cinema had been dominated by rules of continuity and rules of matching and establishing shots, which had pr produced completely seamless cinema. People broke those rules. So what can we learn from the directors in the films of the French New Wave? Well, the best way to see their influence is to just watch the films. They're so ahead of their time, it's not difficult to see. You don't think the editing is that spectacular? Tell that to Scorsese. The idea of the director as an author and the film as their novel wasn't a unique perspective? Tell that to Tarantino. And camera movement was just a basic technique? Tell that to Emmanuel Lubetsky. The thing that the filmmakers of La Nouvelle Vague did was utilise one of the most important thought processes I think there is for an artist. Look at what works in your medium and think. How can it be done differently? Because if you don't have anything new to say, what's the point of saying anything? So try it. Whatever your next creative endeavour might be, look at what everyone else is doing and think of a new way it can be done. And you might see that sometimes by breaking the rules, you can make new ones of your own. La photographie, c'est la vérité. Et le cinéma, c'est 24 fois la vérité par seconde. Hello there, Joe, what do you know? I'm ready to go. Hang up the chapeau so we don't burn it, burn it. The lights are low, no deal, no. I'm ready to go.